It was the year of 1652. One beautiful October morning, then a Dutch settler in Cape of Good Hope, South Africa, emerged from the wooden Dutch fort. He carried a gun on his shoulder and headed towards the vast bush veld that stretched to the horizon. The bush veld was full of springbok, buffalo, baboons, lion, elephants and rhinos. Dan had been assigned to shoot a springbok for his co-settlers. Its juicy meat would feed them for a couple of days. While he scanned the horizon for a herd of springbok, he was alert not to be ambushed by the local hottentots who attacked their fort frequently. Hi, I am Basak from Sabana Safari. That's S-A-B-A-N-A Safari. As a wildlife enthusiast, I speak and write on the wonders of Mother Nature. And I specifically undertake customized adventure tours to Kenya and Tanzania. Unfortunately, even after he had walked for one hour, not a single animal of any kind was visible. Dan was not only unhappy, but also intrigued. Where had the animals gone? Exhausted from his long walk in the sun, he sat down under the shade of an acacia tree. Hot wind blew across his face. His reverie, however, was suddenly broken by the cry of an elephant. Dan got up and started walking towards the direction he had heard the elephant cry. It took him to a cluster of marula trees where he stood stunned by what he saw. A group of elephants were chewing the fruits of the of marula, while some, as if in a state of intoxication, stood unsteadily and about half a dozen elephants wallowed on the ground like drunkards. Surprisingly, they did not care that a human being stood amidst them. Dan realized that this drunken state had something to do with the fruit of marula. Not far away, several springboks, warthogs, baboons stood in a state of stupor. Apparently, they too had helped themselves to the fruits. Smart as he was, Dan was right when he attributed this shocking spectacle to the marula fruits. Marula tree, a typical of low altitude woodlands of Africa and Madagascar, grows up to 18 meters and bears fleshy fruit during the African summer. Elephants, extremely fond of these fruits, are attracted by its smell and travel even 15 to 20 kilometers to feast on them. Other herbivores find them equally tasty. The ripe fruit drops from the tree and starts fermenting. And when this fermented food is a fruit is eaten by the herbivores, including the elephants, it intoxicates them for several hours. The marula tree occupies a sacred place in rural African culture and is the source of fascinating legends. The ripening of the marula fruit in summer coincides with great celebrations in many parts of South Africa. The indigenous tribes traditionally ferment beer from it and its juice, but before taking it, they first offer it to their king or the head of their tribe. All Zulu marriages take place under a marula tree since its shade is believed to bestow fertility and vigor to the new couples. At other times, they eat its pulp extract oil from its kernel and feed its bark to pregnant women as food supplement. Surprisingly, this drought-resistant tree can live for 2,000 years. No wonder it is protected in South Africa. The distinctive quality of marula fruit has led to the growth of several modern industries who produce fruit pulp 
kernel oil and last but not the least cream lacquer the internationally renowned amarula cream using real marula fruit as base is the only cream lacquer of its kind and is the second best cream lacquer in the world so friends if you aspire to get drunk like the african elephants the king of the african jungle then just take a flight and pick up a bottle of amarula cream from the duty free shop so please like share and subscribe to my channel and join me in this amazing journey where i bring you face to face with the cradle of civilization savanna safari your tryst with adventure